This video is for you if you're looking to build your own chest freezer cold dip or ice bath. I'm going to go over what you need to know to put it together and also make sure it lasts. Hey guys, I'm Kristen and I'm about all things holistic wellness for the mind, body, and soul. Product links and timestamps will be in the description below. Let's get into it. First thing that you want to do is get a chest freezer. We got ours on Facebook Marketplace for $250. Tips for getting your chest freezer. The first one, you want to make sure that you can actually fit inside of it. So make sure to measure the width of your chest and also the height from the top of your shoulder down to your bum when you're sitting. You want to make sure that the water can actually come up to your neck. We ended up with a 14.8 cubic foot freezer and that was perfect for us. For reference, my husband is 6'2 and 215 pounds and he didn't wanna feel scrunched up in it and he could actually straighten out his legs and be comfortable. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the one that you get is in good working condition. If it has cracks, chips, missing pieces, that means it's gonna be more work on you to get it up to a condition where it can actually hold water in it. But if you do end up getting one that has surface rust or exposed metal, you can sand it down and cover it with Rust-Oleum paint. Next for the interior, you can go with a plastic interior or a metal interior. We opted for a plastic interior because it was much easier on our part. If you get a metal interior, you're going to have to add an extra layer of protection on the inside, but we'll get into that later. Lastly, check the lid. You wanna make sure that when you open that lid, it can stay open so that it doesn't fall and hit you when you're inside of it. However, I do know that some people opt to actually take the hinges off their lid. You can do this if your hinges are broken and then just have a lid that you can completely take on and off when you're using it. Step two, seal your freezer. If you got one that's pre-owned, you do wanna make sure that you clean it really well before sealing it. For a sealant, we ended up getting JB Marine Weld. We ended up using four syringes at about $7 each. Now, a lot of people will use the JB Water Weld, which is a really similar product to the JB Marine Weld. The Water Weld is more of a putty that comes with two different types of materials that you do need to mix together really well before applying it. And the Marine Weld comes in a ready, easy to use syringe. We also did read some reviews that the Marine Weld does a lot better when it's constantly submerged underwater, whereas the water weld can become soft over time. Now, when you go to apply the sealant, you wanna make sure to get all of the seams in there really, really good. Additionally, it is recommended to seal over that drain plug. A lot of really experienced people online say that if you don't, then there is a high chance that later on that will fail and you'll end up having to seal over it anyways. So save yourself the trouble and just seal over that drain plug. There are other really easy ways to get the water out when you're changing it, like siphoning it out with a hose or getting a pump. The JV Marine Weld sets in five minutes and cures in an hour. After sealing the inside of the freezer, a lot of people go in with a non-toxic epoxy called Pond Shield. This product adds another layer of protection to prevent the water from getting to the inside of your freezer. This product is meant for waterproofing ponds, so it is really a great product to add to your chest freezer. If you have a metal interior or exposed metal on the inside of your freezer, this is a must do. If you have plastic, it is optional. Now we did decide to skip this step. It's important to know that this product needs less than 50% humidity in order to properly cure. We live in Florida. It's the middle of the summer. Less than 50% humidity is not going to happen anytime soon. So we might end up doing this later on, maybe in the winter. I'll keep you updated and let you know. Step three, filtration. How are you gonna keep your water clean? You can actually do this in a variety of ways. We ended up getting the terrarium aquarium filter, which is meant for a 100 to 300 gallon tank and cost us $40. This product filters the water, cleans the water, circulates the water, and also comes with suction cups to easily attach to the side of your chest freezer. We've been using our cold dip for over a month now and it's kept the water crystal clear. Now keep in mind, we do rinse off every time before we get into our chest freezer. If you don't filter your water, you're going to need to change it out regularly. 
I'm talking about probably once a week, depending on use. Other setups that people commonly do include a circulation pump attached to an individual filter in combination with some sort of disinfectant like ozone, UV, or some sort of chemicals. We wanted to keep it really simple right now and avoid any harmful chemicals. We also didn't want to feel really crowded when we were inside the cold plunge. So the system that we have right now is really working for us. But if we start having any issues, we probably would include the ozone. Regardless of your setup, you will eventually need to change out the water. But we'll get into that later. Step four, get a temperature controller. This is going to save you time, money, and frustration. This essentially is a device that has a probe that goes into the water that's in your chest freezer, and then you plug your chest freezer into this device and the device into the wall. And this device is going to turn the chest freezer on or off to maintain the temperature level that you chose, that you set on the device. So because it's controlling the temperature of your water, you're not going to end up getting one solid frozen block of ice in there if your freezer is plugged in all of the time. If your freezer is not plugged in all the time, you're not going to have to go buy bags of ice to cool down the water. And on top of that, it's just really nice to know what the temperature of your water is going to be before you're getting into it. If you're new at cold plunging, you can start at a higher temperature and then work your way down. We got the Inkbird temperature controller and it cost us $35. Now you might notice that this controller has a metal tip and it is going to be submerged in the water at all times. So you do wanna add a silicone layer over this metal tip to make sure it lasts. Now I know you're super excited to get water into your chest freezer, but just slow it down for a minute because we need to get to step five, which is to add support. Chest freezers are not meant to be holding the amount of water that we're gonna be putting into them. So we do need to add some extra support to the bottom. Our chest freezer came with wheels on all four corners. We ended up taking these wheels off and then setting the chest freezer on top of a couple of two by fours cut to the perfect width of the chest freezer. This would cost us about $20. We really liked the option of setting the freezer on two by fours the best out of some of the other options that people do, like getting a rubber stall mat or those foam puzzle mats, because as you're getting in and out and water's coming with you, we wanted the freezer to be elevated a little bit. The freezer's not gonna be sitting in water. And finally, step six, filling up your chest freezer with water. Now, when you're filling it up with water, you wanna make sure that you don't do too much water. Remember that when you get in, you're going to displace water. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't overflow, but also that there's enough water in there to go up to the top of your shoulder. Many people do fill up their chest freezer with water from the hose. We wanted to use filtered water because we are gonna be getting in this thing every single day. Our skin is our largest organ, and so we just wanted to be super health conscious. So we did end up hooking up our hose to our Anespa shower filter and then just running the line out to the chest freezer. Another option you can do to get filtered water in your ice bath is purchase a filter that attaches right onto your hose and then fill it up that way. I've seen a lot of options for this on Amazon. Safety and maintenance for your chest freezer. First off, whenever you're getting into your chest freezer, always, always make sure that it is unplugged from the wall before getting in. This is so, so important because you don't want a chance getting electrocuted. Next, I do not recommend covering the outside of your chest freezer. I've seen a lot of people do this by making a cute little wooden frame that goes on the outside. Although I do think it is super cute, it could actually damage your freezer. These freezers work by taking heat from the water inside your freezer and dissipating to the outside walls of the freezer. So they can heat up. And if you have some sort of wooden frame on the outside, it can affect the function of your freezer and shorten its lifespan. Next, I do not advise people to do cold plunges when they're home alone, especially if you have some sort of health condition or you're new at this, you have to remember that you're putting your body into an extreme condition. So please utilize caution. And lastly, for maintenance, changing the water. We are really hoping, fingers crossed, to be able to go three to four months without changing the water. So far, we're doing pretty good, but eventually we will have to change the water. Our plan is to siphon the water out with a hose. A lot of people said this is the easiest option, so I'll keep you guys updated and let you know how that goes. 
Besides that, you just want to make sure that you're changing out your filter as recommended. Here's the cost breakdown of what it costs to build this cold plunge ice bath. We have the freezer itself at $250, the sealant $28, the filter $40, the temperature controller $35, and the wood beam support at $20, which leaves us with a total of $373. I hope this video has helped you gain confidence in building your own cold plunge ice bath. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.